the zeta function, one of the more advanced functions in mathematics, has to do with the distribution of prime numbers. And it was Leonard Euler in the 1700s that showed that the zeta function is equal to an infinite product involving all of the prime numbers. So I'll write that quickly. And you can see that in each of these factors of this infinite product, you have the prime numbers. There's 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and the next term would have 13. The one after that would have 17. And it's an infinite product, so it goes on forever. And the zeta function was actually more recently made famous due to what we call the Millennium Prize Problems. And with each of these problems, if you're able to prove a hypothesis, then you can win a million dollars. And the zeta function deals with what's called the Riemann hypothesis. And this has to do with when the zeta function is equal to zero. And in a later video, I'll go into greater detail about this since it requires s values to be complex numbers. So it's a little bit complicated and will require much greater care in the explanation. But if you can prove this hypothesis, you will win $1 million, assuming your proof is correct. So let's look at specific values of the zeta function. So if we look at zeta of 1, it would be 1 plus 1 over 2 to the first plus 1 over 3 to the first, and so on. And this is actually referred to as the harmonic series. And I've actually made a video on this where I show that the harmonic series diverges. Or in other words, as you add more and more of these terms, then the sum will start to approach infinity. Though it approaches infinity very, very slowly. And for numbers bigger than 1, the zeta function actually converges. So zeta of 2, another famous problem, 1 plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 4 squared, and so on. This is referred to, or it was referred to, as the Basel problem. And in another video I show that Leonard Euler was able to solve this and show that this is equal to pi squared divided by 6. And mathematicians tried to solve this for almost 100 years before Euler was able to solve it. And then Euler went on to solve all of the even natural number values of the zeta function. So for instance, zeta of 4, 1 plus 1 over 2 to the 4th plus 1 over 3 to the 4th, and so on. He showed that this was equal to pi to the 4th power divided by 90. And you can probably start seeing a little pattern here. For zeta of 2, we have pi squared. For zeta of 4, we have pi to the 4th. And Euler showed, in general, that zeta of 2n, where n is any natural number, is equal to pi raised to that even power, or 2n, multiplied by some constant. And the formula for this is a little bit complicated, but I'll go into greater detail in a later video. And what's really interesting is that if we evaluate the zeta function at 3, so 1 plus 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 3 cubed, and so on, that mathematicians have been trying to solve this problem since the 1700s and have not had any success. We know that if you add this up term by term, that the sum starts to approach 1.2020569, and it just keeps going. It's actually an irrational number, which is proven by Roger Apery, and it's actually named Apery's constant. Though we don't know its exact value like we do for the zeta function evaluated at even numbers. It's conjectured that this is equal to pi to the third power multiplied by some constant. 
but no one's been able to show what that constant would be. So this remains unproven. And Leonard Euler was probably the closest to actually solve this problem, and he solved a related problem where we have 1 minus 1 over 3 cubed plus 1 over 5 cubed minus 1 over 7 cubed plus, and the next would be 1 over 9 cubed, and so on. And he showed that this was equal to pi to the third power divided by 32. Though, as you can see, it's first of all an alternating sum, and second of all, it's missing all of the even numbers. So it's not quite the zeta function evaluated at 3. And a final series somewhat related to the zeta function is the alternating harmonic series 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth and so on. And this can be shown to equal the natural log of 2. And most of these topics that I've just covered I'll go into greater detail on many of them in later videos.